Hi, now that we have learned mathematical operators and F string, using the mathematical operations and F string, we will do a small program. So, the intention of this program is to calculate how many days, how many weeks, and how many months are left in your life. But how can I guess it? So, the assumption is that you are going to live under uh, live until 90 years. See, with the advancement of science and technology, you are going to live way beyond 100 years. That's for sure. But for the for the simplicity sake of simplicity, we will assume that we have 90, we are going to live till 90 years. And if you are going to live till 90 years and we are going to read your present age, and using the present age, we are going to compute how many years are left, how many months are left, how many days are left. So here I have taken a small assumption. We are assuming that there are uh, no leap years. So every year is containing 365 days. And also we, and remaining things are simple. 365 days per year, 12 months per year, and uh, 52 weeks per year, okay? So let's start the program. So first step is we are asking the user to enter his age. So input enter your age is going to read the age. But the problem is input is going to output uh, the string or not output it is going to return a string, right? Now we are going to convert the string that is given which is age into an integer by using the function int. Now after computing after getting the age in, integ in integers, we are going to find out how many years are left. So assuming that you are going to live till 90 years, we are subtracting 90, we are doing 90 minus age as an int, so that you will get how many years are left. So that is what we are storing in years remaining. And after you find out number of years remaining, we are going to find out weeks remaining. So weeks remaining equal to years remaining years remaining into 52. Assuming that the number of weeks in a year is 52. And now we will find out months remaining. Remaining, remaining, months remaining. Months remaining is years remaining into 12. And then we are going to see days remaining. Days remaining is equal to years remaining into 365. Here's a simple program, just brushing up your basics. Now let's try to print one of them. So let's try to print how many days are remaining, okay? How many are how many month? Okay, how many days are remaining? So let's try to run it. See, whenever you are writing a program, instead of going till the end, you stop it in the middle and try to see if everything is working fine, and then continue the program, okay? So I am running it. Let us say, let us say eighty. Your age is eighty. So you have ten years. In these ten years you have 3650 days. So everything is working fine. Now, let's create a string. And in the F string, let's put all this, days remaining, weeks remaining, years remaining, okay? In the F string I'm putting, you have dash number of years remaining I think you remember what is that what an F string is so if you have a lot of variables you want to print then using F string is a simple way so within the curly braces I have to fill up with these variables so in place of years here, I have to put years remaining. Here I have to put months remaining. Here I have to put weeks remaining. And here I have to put days remaining.
So you can put this in a print uh, statement. But the problem is, if I, this is too big, right? So I don't want to put it directly in the uh, print. I will store it in a string and I will print that string. Okay. So let us say message in a string. Now I will directly print message. Now let's run it. Enter your age. Let's enter 80. Then it is saying you have 10 years remaining, 120 months, 520 weeks, and 3650 days. So short life, just 520 weeks. When you see your life in terms of weeks, you'll understand how small it is, and you'll be able to do more productive work without wasting your time. So play with it. Maybe your age might be 25. Just play with it and see how many weeks that you have, and you plan your life ahead. Okay, thank you. Hi, in this program, let's try to use the concept that you have learned so far and do a small program. The program is about calculating the bill. So the concept is, let us say you went out for a lunch with your friends, five of you, and now you got the bill. So how much should each one of you pay along with the tip? So let us say bill is 100 rupees and you have added 12% tip to it. So the bill is going to be 112 rupees, total rupees, and you have to divide it by 5. Very, very simple program. So whatever we have learned so far is going to be sufficient. So for example, let us say the bill is 150 rupees, and you are splitting it among 5 people, and you have to add 12% tip to it. So after adding the tip, you will get the total amount. You have to divide the total amount by the number of people. Okay. So in this case, each person should pay 33 rupees. And now we have to round it to two decimals. Okay. So whatever answer you are going to get, it might be having a lot of decimals. We want to round it to two decimals. Okay. So now let's try to start the program. So initially we are asking for what, what was the bill amount in rupees. So we are taking it, taking it as input. Generally, bill will be in floating point number, right? Something like 123.45, something like that. So we are going to convert into a float. So after that, we are going to ask what is the tip amount? Okay. So how much tip that you are going to plan to pay? Is it 5%? Is it 10%? 12%? Whatever percentage it is, we are going to read it. So we are going to ask the user how much percentage of tip would they like to pay? It can be 10% or 12% or 15%. Okay. So whatever answer they give you, it is in integers. 10 or 15 or 20. We don't add 10.5%. Uh, we don't add 12.5%. Right? So it is an integer. So let's convert it into an int. And now, how many people are splitting the bill? That is what we want. And you know, the number of people is always going to be an integer. It is not like 3.5 people are sharing it, right? It has to be an integer. So that is why we are converting whatever input that user has given into an integer. So why should we do it? Because always remember, input is going to return a string, but we are dealing with numbers. We want to deal, you know, we want to manipulate them as numbers. That is why we are converting them into floats and ints. Okay. So we got all the three numbers, total bill, the tip percentage, and total number of people. Now let us try to find out how much each person is going to pay. So now what is the tip? Tip is a percent given, right? So we are going to take the tip, which is given as an integer, and we are going to divide it by 100. So this is going to convert the tip into percentage, okay? And now we have to find out what is the tip, total amount, okay? So total tip amount is equal to whatever is the total bill multiplied by tip as percent. Now this is the total tip amount. We already have total bill, right? So now we are going to find out total bill 
So total bill is bill amount plus tip amount. Now after find out, finding out the total bill, we have to find out what is the bill that each person has to pay. So bill per person is equal to total bill divided by number of people. So now we can print it, but before we print it, let's convert this into, let's round it into two, uh, let's round it into two decimal points because you are going to get a floating point number which might contain 10 decimal points, which is not uh, how we see a number as. So we want to round it into two. So we are taking the bill per person and we are rounding it, in, rounding it up to two decimal points. That is the final amount that each one has to pay. Now we can print it. It's a simple program. So just brushing up your basics. In few classes we will start complex programs. Okay. So we finally, so let's say what is the bill amount, let's say 100 rupees and let us say we are going to add 20% to it, tip and how many people, let us say 6 people are splitting it, then you can see that it is 20, 20 rupees per person, okay, thank you.